Upstate New York is sometimes called the burned over district because there were so many fires of revivalism and reform. The burning was not a true fire. It was a religious fervor that spread across the state during this early, before the Civil War period. And so there were, at these re religious gatherings, there were sometimes thousands of people thinking about God, religion, a role of an individual to their, um, their, their families, but also their societies, their, their communities. Religion was a very important factor in both the abolition movement and the women's suffrage movement, the equal rights movement. As people are um, coming to terms with their relationship with their communities and their spirituality, they're deciding that they're gonna take action uh, to make things more equal coming to terms with freedom and what it means to be a child of God, what it means to be a whole individual. And they're starting to see that this is maybe not true even among themselves, that they really need to be working for women's equality as well as equality and freedom for people of other races. If we look at the activities that a lot of these women were engaged in prior to their um, Prior to them getting involved in women's rights activism, they were doing things like abolition, they were in the temperance movement, um, they had, they learned how to be activists in other, um, other avenues of, of justice work in America at the time. Um, and so they brought that experience with them to the table when they started to think about creating um, a movement for women's rights. The same area that is even today marked by the Erie Canal was one where you saw religious fervor and almost a, an, um, an anti-religious or a free thought fervor at the same time. The idea that women are to be under the authority of men is held in Christianity. And that became institutionalized from canon law into common law. And that is the source of the idea that women are to be under the authority of men, not to be their own persons. They adopted a declaration of sentiments, they called it. Stanton says we took up the Declaration of Independence and began to read it. And they all knew instantly that's exactly what they wanted to say, with a few slight changes, says Stanton. Instead of saying all men are created equal, they said we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal. And instead of the 17 grievances of the colonists against King George, they thought of grievances of women against the patriarchal establishment. We lose religious freedom in this country. If we break down and destroy that wall of separation between church and state, the founding fathers were very clear. It's not gonna matter who votes. No one will have freedom.